Hey folks, I'm Darren and this is DTech and today I want to show you this Motile brand laptop that is made exclusively for Walmart. So really quickly, Walmart are not making this themselves, they are having some other company, factory, what have you, over a sea somewhere make it for them. Reportedly it's Tongfang and they're actually a pretty well known maker so uh, that's a pretty good sign. I got this because, well, they dropped the price quite a bit so it's pretty attractive for the specs and the last time they did such a thing with their overpowered brand laptops. I got in on that and I've been liking that quite a bit. Also made by Tong Fang. So when this little baby, which is an R5, we'll get into the specs in a second, came down to $300, well, I jumped on it, and a lot of people jumped on this as well as the R3 version, which dropped to as low as $199. So let's just get right into it and see how we like it. So the fit and finish, it is pretty understated, pretty simple, and I like that. I don't need anything flashy in a laptop, although I do really like the RGB keyboard and the overpower, but that's totally another thing. But the front, pretty simple, simple branding bottom I like that there's a really wide grill because you know sometimes if it's on your lap or on a pillow or something you can easily block the intake so over here a large area for air to get sucked in and where it's gonna get blown out is this entire back area which some people don't like but I personally don't have that much of an issue with I like that it's a very large surface area for air to get in and out and you can see they got two nice large bumpers in the front one big thing that I actually noticed is that and I've kind of fixed it. It actually wasn't, actually you can still see, well this is not a very level table, but I can assure you that when I had this sitting on a level surface, like my granite countertop, it actually showed me that this was not actually um, straight. And actually I can look at it, I can see a slight curve to it. And actually I had to slightly put some pressure on this corner so that when it's sitting on the table, it's actually flat, meaning I could press down on this corner and there would be some wobble to it. There's actually a little bit still on this, but again, this table is wobbly to begin with. So yeah, I had to gently persuade it to be back into a straight actual rectangle. The other possibility is that these rubber feet may not be quite so even. This thing weighs really little. It's about two and a half pounds. And the, f the actual material is reportedly metal. I didn't believe it until I actually removed the rear panel and saw that the backside is indeed, you know, brushed proper metal. But when I tap on this, metalish, plasticish. I think this top part is still plastic. I'm not going to go ahead and try and scratch it, but in any case, it feels fine. Uh, the fit and finish, I'm going to say that a lot and repeat myself is okay. It doesn't feel like a premium laptop, but it doesn't feel like a super cheap laptop. For the lid itself, you can't open it with one hand, by the way, if you try to do that, it's gonna, oh, actually, no, no, there you go. <laughs> so I'll just give you an idea. There is a little bit of movement if you wobble it, but honestly, I don't ever do that to a laptop. I don't know why some people do, but the, the hinges feel actually pretty nice and strong. I like the feel of them. They feel smooth. I don't feel any grinding or anything unusual like that. It opens to about there, bonk. And if you wanted to do a little wiggle test, it's not too bad. I mean, again, for an ultra thin, but there is that bit of flex there, so it may or may not work for your particular needs. But for this, again, we're talking about 300 bucks. I think the starting price is about 700, I think, or 600. For that, eh, there's plenty of other options, but when they drop this to 300, it makes it really attractive. On this side, you got, I love that they have a full ethernet port in here. Is there such a thing as a not full ethernet port? So ethernet port, which is great. I've done gigs where there's been saturated Wi-Fi, and I need to plug in to get around that. And really great to have a Wi-Fi port, ethernet port. And they got a regular USB, a super speed USB headphone port, which is also a microphone headset port, lock port. And then charging port. Unfortunately, it doesn't charge via USB-C, even though it has a USB-C port. Love that there's a full-size HDMI port there. That's super handy. And another super speed USB port. And then on the front, you almost miss it. This is actually a micro SD card slot. Uh, some people were concerned that it's uh, it doesn't really click into place and it sticks out a little bit. But honestly, I had one sticking in there for like two days because I was editing photos. And yeah, it was it's very secure in there. I didn't feel like it ever was gonna fall out. So that's pretty much it. When you open this up, you have access to upgrades. So you can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the Wi-Fi card, you can add a second hard drive. 
This uses uh, M.2 style hard drives and it actually has two slots. It comes with one obviously filled and you can fill the other one. There's oddly a space that looks like it could have been used for a full size SSD, but there's no actual connector for it. Now, one thing people mentioned were the Wi-Fi cards only being a one by antenna, but there's a connector for a two by so you can spend about 15 bucks and upgrade that Super easy super cheap, but honestly, I haven't noticed much issue in general browsing. It's pretty snappy But of course your mileage may vary also, it should be noted that this does not have dual memory card slots There's only one slot and a big problem with that is graphics performance. It can only run single channel, which is gonna hinder graphics performance quite a bit. Now, this is not supposed to be really a gaming laptop. So if you're into gaming, I don't know why you would be looking this to begin with, but again, it's a cheap laptop. You just gotta consider what it has. It doesn't have a second port. End of story. That being said, you can apparently put up to, I think people said they got 16 gigs working just fine in here, and it seems to be limited to 2400 megahertz, gigahertz, megahertz. So let's open her up and take a look at what we got going on in the side. Keyboard, nice. People, some people say it's mushy. I like it. It's not, it's really quite quiet. The travel is pretty darn nice. I like the amount of travel. I don't like that there's so much gap in there, which is, uh, oh, hello, that's me. I don't like that there's so much gap in there. There's really a lot of nooks and crannies for dust and crap to get into, so hopefully uh, you're not a person that likes to chomp on stuff while and eating while using your laptop. But overall, the keyboard feels pretty nice. It takes me a while usually to get used to a laptop keyboard because I'm always working on a desktop with an ergonomic keyboard. But overall, once I get used to it, it feels pretty good. I um, don't really have much complaint about the keyboard. One big note is that people complained that in the silver version of this, the backlight was basically useless. So definitely I would recommend getting the black. You can probably even see it on the camera there. Well, let's see if I can get without that. Yeah, so the backlight is not terribly bright, but honestly, it was perfectly suitable to me, especially with this black finish. So the keys are white on the black keys. Totally fine by me. It has Windows Hello built in, so if I were to look at this and this thing's blinking uh, before, it, it'll usually try and find your face. That's what Windows Hello is. Sorry, I should have explained that. Windows Hello tries to find your face and actually you see that red light blinking? It's looking for my face so it can unlock, but it hasn't found me and it just found me, so now it is open and it works pretty nice. That's a nice picture from Stockholm. I took that. And it's got a little simple branding here. The bezel is nice and thin. We like that because it makes things pretty small. Let me actually show you this compared to my trusty old Dell V131. This is also a 14 inch laptop, but it is quite old now. And you can see you gain quite a bit on all ends. So really nice. And also this thing feels like a friggin' tank compared to this guy. So glad to make this one go away but uh, it served me well for quite a number of years. But you can see how thick the bezel is. And they've thankfully improved that quite a bit. Now about the screen, it's an IPS screen. So the reviewing angles are pretty good. Not as good as I've seen, but good enough, unless you're really trying to share with a whole group of people. Uh, the color accuracy, not as good. I was fine editing some photos on it, but honestly, if you're doing a lot of professional work, you're probably gonna want something nicer to check your work on, but for doing basic photos on this, totally fine. Uh, it is full HD, that's good, because usually when you get a cheap laptop, you're gonna get the base HD, which is usually like 1366 which is known as just generally 720. This is full 1080 and it is nice and crisp. 14 inches for that resolution is fantastic. The text is really nice and crisp. The brightness is where it's lacking a bit, uh, especially if you're on power saving mode. But honestly, after I was forcing myself to use power saving mode for a few days just to really try it out, I didn't notice as much the dim screen. So if you go into power saving mode, let me bring it up here. There's obviously a couple levels. If you click on your battery, you'll get performance, and then there's a couple of steps that go towards battery saving. If you go to the bottom most mode, it's pretty dim even when you jack up the brightness. So that's the maximum brightness in the maximum power saving mode. But if we jack it up to the second lowest tier of power saving, click, come on. If we go to the ear, 
that's as bright as it gets there. Remember, if you do any sort of power signal mode, it's gonna limit what is the maximum. So that's the maximum for the second tier, and that is actually quite a decent amount of brightness. So even though I got this light on me right here, this is totally good. So the brightness is low if you've got a really high brightness environment you plan on working in. But for general browsing around, I was actually pretty darn happy with it. So let's actually talk about the specs inside this guy. I know we kind of skipped ahead a little bit, but that's okay. So this version, which I got for $300 on sale, is the R5 Ryzen, which comes with the Vega 8 graphics chip. It comes with 256 gigs of storage in an M.2 format. And it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. Now the lesser variant of this, which was on sale for $199, comes with an R3 Ryzen, four gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage in an M.2 format. So a lot of folks like myself considered a $100 upgrade to be quite worthwhile for that extra power storage and RAM. But of course, if you're doing really basic stuff, Either one will probably suit you really well. So let's talk about battery life, which was one of my biggest concerns, because honestly, I wasn't in the market for this kind of laptop. I was actually looking for a Chromebook just for really general browsing writing stuff, and I wanted a maximum battery life. So when this came along, I was like, oh, that's really tempting. Battery life looked to be pretty good on it, but honestly, I'm surprised. Uh, this thing works if you're in battery saving mode, the best battery life mode, and shush. If you are just doing general browsing, writing, and maybe some light YouTubing, it actually lasts at least a half a day, bare minimum of I found. So if you're just generally browsing, I keep looking on the estimated battery life, it'll show you over 10 hours. Now, are you gonna get 10 hours? Probably not, but honestly, I think I'm getting at least six to eight out of it. And that to me is totally fine. But once I started doing some photo editing, it dropped down considerably. So that's one to keep in mind. So you might get a couple hours out of it doing something like that. So if you're doing video editing, yeah, you're gonna wanna plug in. Now, when it comes to doing high intensity tasks like that, I didn't try video editing on it, but I did try some photo editing and I decided to do it in the stupidest way possible, which is to edit it off of the SD card, insert it into the card slot. And keep in mind, those card slots are usually not that fast. You usually can get a lot better performance by plugging in a better card adapter into a high-speed USB port. But even so, I was able to do quite a number of tasks pretty smoothly. There were some hiccups here and there, but that's also probably to do with me not having, uh, being used to this particular trackpad, you know, the different areas for where you're supposed to go right and left click, haven't quite got used to that yet. It's uh, not, actually that's a good thing to know. They don't really mark where the left and right click areas are, so yeah, it's a little getting used to. Taking a quick look into the bias, there really isn't much you can do there. So unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to do any sort of overclocking or anything on this device, which really, again, not really what it's good for. So some people were asking whether or not this can play back 4K video smoothly. And then other people were asking, well, why would you do that? It's only a 1080 screen. Well, there are reasons to play back 4K video on a 1080 screen, uh, for one, it can actually result in a sharper image because of the downscaling that's occurring. So on YouTube, for instance, if you do select 4K and you try and play it back, it may actually be sharper than watching the 1080 version. It depends on a couple of things, but you would be surprised. Now, if you open up the nerds, sir, the nerds for stats, the stats for nerds to see how well it's playing back, sure enough, I was seeing some dropped frames. But the key here is that you are relying on a good network connection. And sure enough, when I adjusted the laptop for a better signal, I got as little as zero drop frames. So anyone who's having drop frames on YouTube, it's probably your internet connection. Internet, internet connection. Now, if you want to play back 4K files directly on the laptop, I did give it a go with a DJI Osmo Pocket, which is that nifty little uh, gimbal stabilized camera they have, and the 4K video playback totally smoothly, no problems whatsoever. So that's all well and good, but what about something just a little more intensive, such as my GH5's 6K H265 10-bit color 200 megabit codec files, that's the kind of file if you really want to piss off a laptop. And sure enough, even with a new media player and codecs installed on this, it was not playing properly at all. It was playing, but just not, not, not good. So as long as you're sticking to 4K files, this guy plays back totally fine. Video editing wise, I did not try it. I expect to be able to do it, but there'll probably be limitations. 
So how about Heat? This guy, when it's in power saving mode, doing just regular browsing simple stuff, didn't really generate that much heat at all. It was warm, but totally comfortable. But once I started doing some photo editing, it got pretty warm, not uncomfortably so, but definitely more noticeable. How about the noise along with that heat? For the most part, it stayed pretty silent with regular browsing, but again, once you kick up to something like photo editing, it did kick up the fan. The fan is noticeable, but not nearly as bad as my overpowered fan when that starts to kick into high gear. So if you want something silent while you're doing something intensive, it's gonna be something you're gonna have to try for yourself. It's one of those things where it might be good for you, might not. Also should note, you can do 4K out of the HDMI port. People reported no problems doing both 4K UHD, which is uh, 3840, and then DCI 4K, which is 4096, both it up to 60 Hertz out of that port, no problem. Just make sure your other equipment is also, of course, compatible and capable. Now about this whole THX certification thing or tuned the screen and the audio is supposed to be tuned by THX, I take that with a big grain of salt. Um, first of all, the THX for audio, that has nothing to do with the built-in speakers. That's only through the, uh, the headphone port and the tuned screen. It's like the THX thing just looks like a gimmick to me. I would love to be proved wrong, but uh, please, if you have any information that would suggest otherwise that it's not just a marketing gimmick, post below, would love to hear it. One quick word about the power adapter. That's the one thing I was a little skeptical about. I like the barrel end of it. It's got nice strain relief, but the strain relief on the brick end looks and just feels a little lightweight. So uh, if you're the type of person to abuse your power adapters, eh, I don't know. It's one of those things time will tell. And I think you should just look a little closely at it and keep an eye on it. For my purposes, I'm usually very careful with stuff, so I'm not too worried. It's just one of those things you're again gonna have to consider for your own needs. How are the speakers. These two little fellows on the bottom here are typical crappy laptop speakers. The one thing I really like is that they get pretty darn loud. That's all I really care about in a laptop speaker because I don't expect them to be that good. The worst part about them is that they distort quite a lot when you max them out. It's not a really gritty distort distortion, it's more of a tinny distortion, but it is definitely there. But like I said, this is a Little, little laptop, that's pretty typical. It's quite a bit louder actually than that uh, Dell V131 that this is taking over for. And now the overall performance, just to give a quick word on the Passmark ratings. If you don't know what Passmark is, it's a benchmark tool. These things just give you an idea of how these things perform in relation to other laptops. This guy's CPU benchmark is right around the seven and a half thousand mark, which is pretty good. And actually, if you compare it to, where'd you go? There you go. This old dude, this guy is an i5 second gen, I think a 2550U or something like that. This guy's Passmark is, was uh, about 2500. Actually, yeah, right around line with the model number, I guess. So, and this I was able to do 10A editing on no problem. But then this guy, 7,500, you should be able to get a lot of work done on this guy. And again, it's more of a comparative tool. So I like Passmark for when I'm shopping for something. I'm not gonna compare this thing's Passmark to a much higher end computer. It doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna compare it to other Passmarks in the range of computer that I'm looking to compare this to so I can use it as a buying tool. So the big question really is, Reliability. Walmart just launched this brand and they just even launched the customer support lines and all that sort of stuff for it. Are you gonna be able to rely on them to support you if something goes wrong? That is the big question. And that's probably why it wasn't selling very good at its full price because well, there's a lot of other competition out there that already has well-established support lines. So should you trust them? That's a good question. Honestly, for me, it was cheap enough that if it only lasts me a couple years, I'll be okay with that. But I'm happy enough with the overpowered brand that I got from them a couple, actually no, that was only earlier this year. Wow, time flies. I'm already pretty happy with that. So I decided, let me give another go at it. And one other thing I should mention is it's really nice and easy to upgrade this. There's no annoyance. There are six screws. Pop this off. That's all you need to do. No fuss, no muss. There's not even any of those stupid warranty void stickers covering any of the holes. So it is really quite as straightforward as you can get. And one of the really nice things, the installation of Windows looks to be completely stock. There is no added blow there whatsoever. Just the usual stupid couple of games that Windows includes in every installation. So really liked that about it. So overall, I'm a happy dude. I like it. I'm not gonna say that it's perfect for everybody, but for what I was looking for, it surprised me. 
So that's pretty much it. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was helpful, there is a subscribe button somewhere around here. And also there's a little bell thing you gotta hit if you wanna actually get notified when I put out a new video. So I'm Darren Levine, this is the Motow 14, and I hope you enjoy. H265, 10 bit color, 200 megabit, 6K. GH5's 10 bit color, 426, 6K. H265, 200 megabit, 10 bit. That's it, right? But what about something just a little more intensive? 6K, 200 megabit, 10 bit color, 4, 6K, H265, 200 megabit, 10 bit color. Yeah, keep it simple, you dummy.